All right, I'm going to start recording this. I did set up a YouTube channel, so um, I can upload I can upload this moving forward from that point on, um, which means that for future reference, I'm going to have, probably have to find. Ooh, there's probably is there there's a way to get the chat into the Twitch stream, isn't there? I would just have to add it as a thingy, wouldn't I? I'm going to try it. Let's let's just see. I hope it, this isn't like plugging. Which one are you? Oh, 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 we're doing it. I'm learning. Here we go. Chat window. Gonna shrink it down a little. I'm learning. Oh my goodness, it's happening. Look at that. That's the link. There we go. Oh, it's the age of the future, baby. Look at that. Okay. Now this is a real stream. But yeah, for sure, I'll, I'll put that up. Oh, Donosaurus Rex. Yeah, I'll add, a, add you as a friend. I didn't realize Donosaurus Rex was, oh man, there you go. I didn't realize you were Don, come on. Yeah, exactly. This is uh, this is the, this is the this is the test run. Thanks for uh, thanks for your patience, everybody. As I try to figure this out. Um, so, f okay, let's get a little bit more official here. Let's get serious. Um, for those joining, I am just working out some character sketch. I'm purposefully avoiding doing some Tellurian stuff just because I've i kind of got to figure out um, what to present for my next one. So, um, in the meantime, I'm just kind of making up something a little bit more flippant so we're going laser pirates so I've got my shape language established uh, I, this is this is uh, the little paper cutout version is um, is my kind of samurai Jackie uh, visual soundtrack and so now I'm just trying to work up from uh, gesture into building up some pretty pretty rough rough and tumble anatomy but this will be kind of the framework moving forward um, tried to find a more dynamic pose than this standing one from earlier that I just kind of wasn't feeling. Just wasn't laser piratey enough, I guess. <clears throat> yeah, and it's funny, I think, you know, it comes out of just, well, and, and for, for reference too, here you go, let me flip back. Um, came out of trying, just not really, not, just not really seeing it. I guess, yeah. Failed attempt. There we go. Okay. I think it's it's kind of handy to save these um, these scruffy drawings underneath. Kind of remember where you came from. Because the, that's, the, that's the one thing. As you go, it's like obviously it's so easy to just lose the energy of it. Let's see, I'm just gonna. <clears throat> I know I can tend to talk a little quietly or start getting mumbly, so I'm just moving the mic a little closer. Let me know if that's a little bit too much. Good, good, we want swashbuckler. So, so the shape language cutout version, uh, there wasn't really a method besides just trying to use a really opaque brush. Um, let me, let me see here. Um, I will I will explain again the the concept, especially now because we're we're recording for posterity. Um, I'll explain again, the, kind of the, just the idea behind um, visual soundtrack. So effectively, what I'm trying to do is think of like using the 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 psychology of shape and color. Just just the the gut instinct on how color and shape really res resonate and respond to you to kind of try to um, you know, get, lead lead the emotion of of 
the viewer when they when they see the thing. So I'm going for something kind of stark and striking. I want a very like you know a dangerous bold yellow triangle there on the shoulder, and 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 so I'm just trying to hit a few key simple notes and keep it really broad and simple. Like I'm not worried about proportion or anatomy or, or anything like that on it. It's just what is the what's the visual music underneath it, and then that kind of gives you a sense of of how it's going to feel. And it was and it was in in doing that actually that that the original pose. Once I had here, let me actually instead of just talking, let me point it out. Once I had, once I had this, once I had the paper cut out, um, this came second. Uh, this was done second. This this was done first. It it's just that, it this this wasn't living up to it. It just it, like the the visual soundtrack here, and I'll I'll just make a note the visual soundtrack. Um, was a, was a lot more fun. Uh, and felt a lot more interesting than than this drawing than this drawing here was doing. So I'll cross that out a couple more times. Um, but no, I'll just I'll just hide it. Let me see. Okay. But no, I need to keep that there because that keep that that's where all of our energy is coming from. Oh, and I drew all over my layer. Oh, bad layer management. Okay. Good. 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 Glad to know this sounds great. I I like I've been saying to people I'm no audio engineer so I'm, I'm learning how to make basically make sure that the mics actually work and and all that I finally learned that the secret to not hearing my voice repeat over and over was just to take my headphones off so yay sometimes simple is best so now what I'm thinking too is I want this hair to be like big and crazy because I'm, I'm going for kind of this like going for this 70s Barbarella slash Mobius slash Yodorowski feel so I kind of want to just go I want the hair to be a shape that that kind of contrasts the pose but makes it but but makes it stick out so actually what I think I'm gonna do just for the sake of the exercise is I'm gonna um, force my hand a little bit and try to get myself not to look too close at anatomy details so okay Great. I'm just gonna silhouette it out, and I'm gonna take a bit of a gray shape. Yeah, go in, uh, go in, just huge. Because I think you know the typical. I'd probably, I'd probably go like this. Hooray! Oh, thrilling. So thrilling. Um, obviously that's not gonna. No, that's not gonna do it. So um, this genre needs laser pirate hair. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. Hairspray, that would do it. I got some motion there. Got some. I think the one thing I don't want to do is to go like with this line of action. Like I think that that's that actually ends up being more distracting than, or uh, or or the reverse. If I went with this line of action like you know because we uh, effectively what I what I ended up creating was um, uh, here let me get some red we've got whoosh, these these lines here and then the line of action overall is is, is going through like this um, and so the thing I don't want to do is 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 have the hair kind of like reflect that so I kind of want to yeah we'll have it have it working counter to it so okay, all right. That's that'll work, and and, and I'm, I'm not I'm not too concerned about the details of it, and I'm gonna figure out the next little next little bit. All right, thanks for thanks for joining us. So let's see, got kind of just the general shape, and uh, you can still move this around and stuff like that. I actually, uh, this a little works a little better when it's closer to the top of the head, I think. This is not a complex design. This is this really is not. So let's see here. 
I'm going to just, uh, you know what, I, I'm going to just zoom in and go in with my usual process. So at this point, sketch is done. Hooray. All right. Um, I love to leave myself surprises. Just this, like, just purely for myself. Um, I kind of like to semi-wing it at the inking phase. So I'm going to try to kind of just jump in. And I'm going to carry my little paper doll with me as a constant kind of reference point and reminder of where I am and what I'm doing and what the overall feel is and that's just gonna that's just gonna sit there with me happy little paper doll and no no you know what I need some more structure I thought I was ready I thought I was ready I wasn't ready I'm too scared I need some I need some more structure so I'm gonna I'm gonna block out a few more of these shapes in a little bit more detail. I think with the body I'd probably be okay to start, but this face is completely undefined. So I kind of think a few more a few more decisions need to get made. Yeah, it must be almost impossible for any artist doing Twitch streams not to constantly bring Bob Ross into it. I just he has reached full cultural saturation. So, oh, Russia, awesome. Glad you could join us. What, it's uh, almost 11 at night here. It must be, uh, some I don't know, sometime in the daylight over there, possibly, or are you, uh, I'm no expert. I, uh, I'm hoping I get to visit Russia sometime soon. 5 a.m. Holy cow. Bravo. What are you doing up? Go to bed. This I'm just some, some guy drawing a laser pirate. blank expression right now. I'm kind of just more laying in the, um, the geography. <laughs> yeah, Calgary, Calgary and Edmonton. Uh, yeah, yeah, L very little, uh, very little, little difference. We can probably see some of the same clouds. Not really, obviously. So, okay, a little bit more structure. Um, this laser bar, this laser pirate, I keep wanting to say laser barbarian. Gonna start off, and this can always be changed, but I'm gonna just start off with a, a stern expression of grim enjoyment of battle and excitement so again those are the lines that I've just laid down here are really mostly just um, like architecture like just trying to think of like where jaw bones and, and teeth and nasal bones and stuff like that are and then from that point you can kind of just oh and this is something I'm awful for so this is <laughs> I, doing the twitch stream is this will be interesting I you know this is my first foray into foray into it um, there's also something very vulnerable about it because this is I am horrible for the majority of like even just Tellurian shots where a character has an expression that's supposed to read that's supposed to convey something important um, I probably will redraw it like 20 times um, trying to find trying to find it thankfully this this is a little less a uh, little less complicated not quite as much as hinged on the laser pirate right now. Okay, so that's 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 something to work with. That's the face under structure. Okay, um, do, 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 do. hair. This is an interesting challenge too. This Twitch stream of trying to actually keep up the description. 
the pet or the talking talking about what you're doing. Historically, I haven't been very good at this. No, don't. We'll delete this one. We I, we won't upload it. Up, don't won't upload it. No one will find out. Yeah, yeah. Seeing someone try to, it's like watching someone in slow motion just trying to push their head through a brick wall. Um, let's see. Okay, I think I'm, I'll, I could do some figuring out for this costume. So what I was thinking was, this like this yellow this yellow shape here is really like a um, a flexible. I want to go. I I, I want to enjoy this European comic book future motif. So I'm gonna go with some like I I, I actually on I just recently read through all of the Meta Barons. Um, I it was. My concept artist friend Casper Conifel, as a parting gift, gave me uh, the anthology of the Meta Barons, and so I read through all of it. And one thing I, l I love about European sci fi, when it's just like all out psychedelic sci fi stuff, is how many um, unmaterials or like different material, like materials that you understand but you know aren't real, like it where. It, you can kind of let yourself get away with that a little bit more. Oh, and let me see. Yeah, don't don't ever, don't feel bad about erasing and redrawing a million times. I mean, that's. I would pull up. Oh, let's see. No, I don't have that. I don't have that with me. So I'm actually one of the things I wanted to do um, to explain again for the for the new joiners or, or the or people watching this on on YouTube if, if that's how, how you choose to live your life um, it's uh, I, I'll, I'll rebel against myself so with Tellurian I'm I'm trying to let the line line art be kind of the darkest element it, it's it's always leading it's it's always it's kind of a line first uh, aesthetic so I rare I try to I try to avoid any fill color that that is that is darker than 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 like a hundred percent black that, that that's reserved for the line art. Um, so for for this part of doing this uh, this paper doll is like just fill one hundred percent black, just absolute black. Like let's just eliminate all light and shape and all that. It's just yeah. So there we go. I just keep giving myself guidelines and then rebelling against them. Finding some way to finding some way to escape them. So it turns out I wasn't ready to do the final inking. It turns out my sketch was more vague than I really wanted. Although this is kind of trying to solve for the um, the costume. I want to make sure because I'm going to fill this entire. I'm going to fill the body in just black. So we're going to lose all of this info. I want the I want the dimensionality. Um, of what is there to really hold a lot of weight. So, like for example, we've got, uh, and it, yeah, who knows when it, when this is all said and done, it may amount to very little. But um, let's see. I've got the shoulder muscle. I want I want this to I want this to cut across. Just to de decide now how much I want to show it go over the shoulder bone over the clavicle across the chest, uh, flat here with a slight curve, I, I, because and like normally I'm, I may not be so concerned, but I feel like this line is going to be saying a lot more about volume than it would otherwise in a different, in a different design. Um, so we'll see, we'll see. Yeah, it's it. You know, it's funny. Uh, hey, from France, that's awesome. And yeah, Travis Charest is, or is it Charest or Charest? I I I say Ch I don't know. One of those names that I've only ever read. Um, but yeah, from France, that's awesome. Welcome. But yeah, no, it's it it can be in this. Um. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pronounce his name wrong. Um. 
but uh, Kim Young Kim Jung Ji Kim Young Ji, I again one of those names that I've I've I read more than I've seen. But the the incredible Japanese. Uh, oh no, now I don't know if we, for sure if he's is he Japanese or Korean. I need to read up on these artists before I start talking about him. But you all know him. He's the one who can just draw basically a complete illustration straight up that is like the size of a wall filled with incredible perspective and creative designs and all this amazing stuff. And it's like, he's Korean. Okay, good. That's, I, yeah, perfect. Um, and and uh, man alive, like it just, you know, it's, it, it's awe-inspiring. And, and it, it is, it's nice now that, that he's revealed, he's shown more about like um, the, 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 the practice he does. Uh, and and the just the, the brutal hard work like you know all the studies and, and examination and, and stuff like that that he does so it's at least revealed some of the mechanism but in the early days <laughs> I was saying to an artist that it almost I almost felt bad for young artists growing up in the post in the post Kim era because it, 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 you know it looked these artists who can draw like printers that's so intimidating even like I you know and I, there, there's stuff to be I mean I, I have huge admiration for them like it's incredible like watching um or like well, I, I got to see Marco de Djordjevic and Wes Burt drawing in Montreal years and years and years ago and it's just to watch them go you're like how, how are you what what are you doing this is are you are you are you a wizard um so yeah, it's you know it's it's incredible and it's aspirational and that's awesome. But I also find, you know, there's um, it can be encouraging to see the process and to to understand that like there is a process and there are stages and there are like you can you can go at it at your pace for now and and um, you know you're learning as you go and. But yeah, man alive. That's so good. Yeah, being able to draw and critique. Um, oh, you were at that. That's awesome. Was that that was that was two thousand six, I think. Oh no, if you were there you would I don't know if you saw <laughs> the 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 talk that um the painting demo slash talk that um, Marco De, Marco De Georgievic whispered, and for some reason myself gave. Um, I was I was with them, and sandwiched in the middle. They I they're great guys. I and I have um, huge huge admiration for them. And and since you know since then, I, uh, yeah, it, <laughs> I was like I had been working professionally for like two or three years at that point um talk about intimidating because here i was trying to go i was going through this process i like i was going through like what you're looking at here this was the process i was beginning i was i was like okay well what's the what's the understructure and let's start thinking about design and story and all that sort of stuff and it's i'm i'm go okay i'm glad you guys are watching and if for anybody anybody watching on youtube that's awesome. That's that's awesome too. I'm encouraged by that. That's. I hope you're getting something out of it. But it definitely doesn't show as well as. Um, the incredible. Almost like dance of. Uh, rendering and design at the same time, like the confidence that comes from, um, you know the 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 practice and all the blood sweat and tears that guys like Westbert and Marco have, have have put into it um so so just being able to watch them draw in front of a in front of an audience was um it was mind-blowing so I remember thinking I, I can't remember if Wes went first or if Marco went first but either way I basically said all right I've taken it about as fun as possible or as far as possible um and let's face it we all we all came here to see these guys paint, so uh, I was I, I was thrilled just to, to hand the reins over and, and, and watch them go. Yeah, it's fun. I like to to me that's the thing too. Like I think 
every artist too has their priorities i think every artist comes with you know the, the, we all we all have those we all we all just really have those things that are that are important to us and so you know everyone's style is kind of built around that um it it's it, it the, our techniques are all formed by that anything that we have that could be called style is there because of it and so um i think just being able to watch yeah just being able to watch people do their thing is is neat you can take what you want leave what you want um i'm not sure what i was going to say with that but it it's it's I know it's fun. It's I'm glad we have artists of all kinds out there. Like I'm, I'm glad we have. Well, okay, there's too many to list. I could just start listing off every artist and start talking about why I'm glad we have them, which would start getting kind of mushy fast. But I mean, just thinking as an example, because it, it came up recently. Okay, well, because we were talking about you know guys like Wes Burt, who, man alive, I, I can't even get specific about it but who can like you know an incredible design really really like such a um an inspiration as far as what you can accomplish if you are drawing all the time like he is he, you know he's the direct you can see it you can see it in his work it's like you 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 will you just keep going don't you you just keep going and going like that's that's kind of amazing <laughs> well, I'm at this. This is this is the fast and dirty stage. Um, yeah, it's exactly. You're like you're. It's opening. It's opening it up in in these in these different ways. Like for so for me, okay. I, now I remember my point. So for me, being able to, like the reason I am working like this, the reason I'm I'm doing it like this is is. Um, my my personal number one priority is is just the story like it's um i i just want to tell the story and whatever it takes to do that i will do and and so um a beautiful image is not my priority if that happens because of it then great but i kind of think that in in my eyes an image that works and that tells the story no matter how simply as long as it does it clearly and it does it effectively that's a beautiful image um so like i so I, i'm obviously not captain renderer um uh but that's just because it doesn't it doesn't kind of scratch those it doesn't scratch that itch that i'm trying to scratch um whereas you know you get the people like uh, man you know monsters like jamie jones who are like um oh what's the what's the watercolor painter who's in sergeant who are basically like sergeant reincarnated um john singer sergeant uh you know you get you get guys like that and it's like i'm so glad you exist <laughs> i'm so glad you exist you exist and you're doing this stuff um I'm going to just start inking this silhouette with a big, thick, opaque brush, and I'm just going to start obscuring. And then, if I've done this properly, the silhouette should read clearly enough that I can maybe just polish it up a little bit. <laughs> the, the Mass Effect helmets, yeah, the four. Oh. Man, never again. Never again. That was working hard, not working smart. Um, the time times have come where I've had to do similar kinds of tasks. As um, what what uh, what Cameron eighty eight is referring to for anyone who doesn't know is like the for Mass One. Um, we released some of the sheets of, of helmets that I designed where it's just going helmet after helmet after helmet after helmet. Just, um, but I, and I've talked about this idea before, what, what that was at the time, because I didn't, I honestly didn't know any better was just basically rolling the big 
wheel of aesthetics. So it's just, this one is pointy, and this one is round, and this one has a light on it, and this one has three lights on it. Um, there wasn't, like there was, you know, it's all trying to stay consistent within the style, and you know that you're trying to build up the universe, and you have some rules for it and stuff. So it's not, it's not purely just aesthetics without constraints, but, but the... Um, I didn't know then how intentional how intentional about telling the story you can be with something like helmet designs. And now, I mean helmet helmet design, I mean especially especially for um what we would call a, a box cover character, like a you know, the a flagship character like Shepard where it's like okay, this is the helmet that honestly is going to be the face like this is this is the face of a character or it's like it's the it's the face that's supposed to define um define a, a, a whole brand effectively um i i i think i actually am, am very Proud of the helmet we found. I I, I really like the the uh, the N7 helmet. I think I think um, uh, Derek Watts, the art director, uh, did a great job in in kind of honing all of that <laughs> all of that that uh, just that mountain of of stuff that I produced. I, I think he did a, a really great job of of honing it down into something that that actually worked. Because um, I I don't think I could have done it. At the time, I don't think I was that artist yet. Um, but I think I think now, moving forward, the 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 approach that I would advocate is that, um, similar to what I have heard, was a was an old Jim Henson studio practice, um, but would be that like not putting pencil to paper until you've gone around, and and basically talked to all relevant parties and and written out extensively who and what um, this character is before you do any sort of design work. Now I'm being kind of sloppy with these big brush strokes because what I'm really concerned about is just that outside line. I'm not thinking about overlaps or anything like that because this is all going to get eaten up. Yeah, exactly. Like I think I think if you if you know yeah, exactly. I, I've talked about this for anyone who watched my uh, ACAD talk on YouTube that this is or well, for in Skinner's illustrations case, who was there? Um, th this is very much a, a thing I believe is is you know figure out what the heck you're trying to design, and that sounds obvious, but it's so easy for artists just to leap right into the into the drawing and designing phase, especially when you see out there, <clears throat> you know, so many people post those those sheets and sheets and sheets of um, silhouettes. Um, where you're really hard pressed to um, choose what's re really different between them, um, like gun to your head, is there really that much that's different? Um, so, like as an example, I, you know, let's 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 take let's say we're doing an, another round of Mass Effect helmets. You know, begin with saying like, what is what is the actual. Uh, you know, even even to go so far as to talk to marketing and to say, okay, marketing, what what do you want to say to players when they when they first look at this character? Like, what do you want them to think? What do you want them to feel? What are the emotions? And and at that point, even then, you could begin to think about that. W that would immediately start to limit, in a in a positive sense, that would begin to limit what shapes and colors you you started to to lean on. Um, that would that would start, um, you know. It, a helmet is effectively just, you know, it's like car design. You know, it it has every helmet is a face, explicitly. It is a face. Like what is, what is the expression that we want um, this helmet to have? You know, do we want it to be a stern helmet? Uh, angry is it? Um, 
forlorn like wh- whatever whatever it might happen to be it doesn't it doesn't matter you can you can design that a helmet based on it just as long as you know what it is you want to you want to do so this is uh I know I released that one minute I released a one minute fast like sped up video um, of my process on one of the Tellurian images and <clears throat> kept it to a minute just because it was actually originally done for uh, um, for Instagram and then I created a YouTube channel to and then uploaded it just just for the sake of starting it um, which now I can put some of this on. Okay, but um, this this is, I guess we're looking real time at kind of like the inking process because um, even that uh, I think the um, I did a, a a talk with my brother on his channel R and D Fantasy um, where I, I went through a process, but it was it was even still it was sped up. Um, so it kind of just trying to when it comes when it comes to um, the inking stage this is I'm, I'm trying I've, I've I always try to leave myself it's like the old um, for any of you who've worked with tracing paper before and, and like the old old school methods and stuff if you just trace obviously the drawing is going to die a slow painful death um, it's really trying to like give yourself enough of a of a consistent leaping off point, um, but make sure that when it comes to actually inking the damn thing, you're you're um, you're really drawing it fresh. Like you're actually really drawing it for the first time. I don't know. Someone I forget even who gave me that advice, but it's. <clears throat> held me in good stead all these years. Uh, it's it's at least helped me enjoy the inking process a lot more because then I don't feel quite so much like I'm just executing it by rote. So while I'm doing this, um, because the inking stage I find really meditative, so it's easy for me to kind of either A, zone out, or B, talk about things. Um, And this is kind of just execution. Um, Does anyone who's still listening uh, have any questions or, uh, or anything like that? Or not anything like that, just questions. <laughs> Let's see. So I'm going to take this made up pattern that I'm putting on the, what would you call that? Shoulder, shoulder piece. I'm going to apply it to the holsters too. This is kind of a, a nod to that, um, Meta Baron style, like made up material. Yeah, I think um, I'm first of all, Don, I'm jealous that you've been able to see him draw. I'm looking forward to the opportunity someday. Um, but you're right. I think I think there's actually a huge, huge element um, of just confidence yeah 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 it, it exactly it's like you can you can spend forever trying to find that perfect line but but like um just confidence and consistency and i think <laughs> yeah it's it's so true it's like yeah you can look at them and just think like wow that's that's perfect how did you how did you do that but so much of it too I love is that like his drawings have so much personality as well and they always have even if it's if it's absurdist or surreal um, 
they have like strong characters or 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 something some statement yeah and that's amazing right like it, it's it's so true when I, I've, I've been finding like the tellurian process has really helped me to let go um i know the, just because i'm now up to something like 120 images in it or something like that and i've never made this many personal pieces consecutively and it, like it's 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 kind of crazy but it's really helped me to just realize okay actually you know you know what that's done that's that's done i could niggle with that forever but i i think that's that's about it um how did you find transferring the design skills for characters to landscapes and environments do we use similar methods or something different um in order to yeah that's a good question cameron 88 in order to do like i'm i'm not shy about referring characters to environments like i i i, I love doing characters and i will do environments um and again to bring up tellurian that's been an awesome exercise in forcing myself to because i want to render everything somewhat equally and and you know if if there's if there is a background and it's important to tell the story i want to render it with at least some parody with the figures um so that it holds up so that it remains consistent it's visually consistent and so that's forced me to do a lot more environment work than i have ever done before and um and so what i find is i think it's very similar in that you know you're you're still i'm still thinking about um color and shape and and kind of like the um the the effect that they're having on the viewer like what are what are what kind of soundtrack are they delivering um what kind of emotion are they are they conveying or or meaning or or sometimes even just the pure you know uh, I actually okay at work I was working on this one illustration a long time ago that that was it, it was it, it needed to be on a cobblestone street and I had set myself up for it and when I really got into the drawing I realized oh no like if I need if this drawing is going to work I need to hand draw hundreds of cobblestones and there was kind of no way around it either I was going to throw the drawing away or I was going to hand draw the things like the the drawing just kind of needed it. it it wouldn't have it wouldn't have worked with a more automated you know like copy and paste and transform kind of solution and i did it and i was so glad that i did um because it was just that's what it that's what it needed but it was like it needed it for the sake of the story and the emotion and to get that feeling of a raw real imperfect gritty kind of place so i think you know, thinking if, if you think about, uh, the, I guess the, the cheapest version to do it, the easiest version to do it is just like, uh, um, you know, think of a think of a location as a character. Um, think of if you if you're designing a, a building or a, a back alley or or a cardboard box, it's like thinking about the character and the story of this of this place or thing. I don't know. Does that does that answer it? Because I, I think it is very much similar. I think you know, it, no matter no matter what you're drawing, it's all in service of the story, or I think it should be all in service of the story. Now I don't have. This is one of those areas where I don't have reference for the hair, but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna wing it. Um, figures and face studies. Um, let's see. Super curious as to what you think of all these redesigns I'm working on with the t all the talk about helmets. As an actual question, I've been doing figure and face studies to build up to my next portfolio project. What would you recommend on top of that to study leading up into something new? Okay, I, I'm now, I'm, okay, <laughs> I'm super biased here. Um, so take this with a massive grain of salt, but honestly, having worked on um, Tellurian now for over a year, I have found just in terms of like personal development um, to constrain yourself with a narrative 
and not allow yourself to stop until you've delivered that narrative. Um, and then to try to basically articulate it fully. So, and that, that, that I would say means a finished illustration, um, finished to whatever capacity you, you desire, but w with that includes figures and environment and acting between those figures, like not, not, not just the standard kind of, or that common concept art, you know, mysterious shadowy figure standing on a street corner or, you know, the classic stick salesman or whatever. Um, but like figure out a narrative and try to deliver it. Yeah. If you can get interaction between them, like, you know, characters in an environment that, you know, they're, they actually are touching it and interacting with it. They have a purpose there that you either can determine or want to determine. Um, yeah, I, I think, you know, that, that sort of thing, because being able to Partly, I think it just really helps a portfolio because I, I, I've, been, I've been saying this a lot lately um, when when looking at, at like student portfolios particularly is that th the standout thing in so many portfolios that I see that actually make me stop in my tracks, it's, it's that ability to like preserve something, like deliver something of a narrative in, in your work. Because like I've seen... I really have seen cardboard box props um, deliver on a narrative like that are are so of a setting and are, are so in support of of their world that that like they really grab you and and um, and so I think just the huge amount of practice that um, that a finished illustration that includes environments and characters in an understandable or at least intriguing narrative scenario you just I think that's just the, the best exercise I've ever come across and it and they really do sh show very well in portfolios It's it's really too. It's like the um, the exercise equivalent of um, uh, anytime you come across. I, I I'm trying to be diligent about this in myself. That anytime I'm drawing, and I can tell that I faked something, like that I just kind of <laughs> we'll just like cover that up or crop that out. Um, I am really trying to, to stop and say, nope, look it up, go find it. You got it, go, go, like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not letting myself get away with it anymore. Or at least attempting to, I mean, we all eat a bag of chips at 3 a.m. every now and then, but. <laughs> you know what I mean? Speaking of shortcuts, not letting myself get away with it, just blatantly copying and pasting these guns because I'm not that bothered. Um, personally, <laughs> I, uh, oh no, I would never, I would never judge you. I would never judge you. I, uh, yeah. Personally, I'm always a fan in uh, in this like I, I, I kind of love this like 70s European sci-fi motif. Partly just because they were never too bothered with any kind of groundedness or believability when it comes to ships and weapons. Like they can just do, yeah, <laughs> they can just it's it's yeah it's that that's the gun that's whatever yeah. Your ship is a is a is a giant. Well, insert obscene thing here. And, yep, that's it.
yeah i mean if you want it, it it's it doesn't hurt too to do like model sheets and and stuff like that being able to because i think well i mean the the example uh <laughs> yeah flash cordon perfect <laughs> flash cordon villain all right well that's i think i'm cha that's channeling the right stuff there um the uh sorry what was i going to say here going back to skinner yeah okay um the the story i tell often or the the comes to my mind often on this subject is um, Saren from Mass Effect 1 um, because as I think I have said in a few talks I might even have done this in the ACAT talk so forgive me I'm already old man Matt repeating himself but um, I was trying to draw him in T-pose a lot I was purely drawing him in T-pose and it was just really hard to find um, something that that anybody could agree on or get excited about and like they were none of them were bad designs and to be honest i i really believe that any of them any of the ones we tried would have worked like it and i, I believe that's the case for most designs like honestly i think whatever you like you can find almost anything will work as long as you're consistent about it and confident about it kind of going back to kim jung ji kim young ji uh, it's killing this pronunci pronunciations. If I'm going to do this Twitch thing, I'm going to have to learn how to pronounce these names before I say them. Um, but but yeah, it was once he was drawn in an actual pose. It was like it wasn't until then that it actually really clicked with people, and they knew kind of what he was and what he was about, and 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 they could actually make some calls on on a design that worked. So. I mean, and that the illustration was was the one of um, Saren holding some poor schmo over the over a ledge, um, like by the throat, or by the, was it by the face? I can't remember. But it, it was what led to the scene of Saren actually like grabbing Shepard, and because um, one of the animators liked that image so much, he decided to try to make sure that happened. Which is cool, but but it wasn't it wasn't until that image was was done that um, that people really clicked with it and that we could actually move forward with it because then it was like oh, okay okay we get it we know who this guy is yeah this is it was this is bad guy I mean you know <laughs> it's, it was as as blatant as an illustration of your villain punching a puppy in the face um, certainly not sophisticated um but it it was it worked it was effective and it was far more intimidating than just alien looking guy standing there so what i um to repeat myself i know i've i know i've said this before in in talks so um but uh i concept art in particular is half blueprints half inspiration um and those halves come at different times in different ways and 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 sometimes it shifts and moves back and forth um i think being able to inspire but then being able to articulate clearly those are both critical critical skills so um so yeah, being able to create a blueprint that a model builder can actually work from without going insane and being able to put it into a context that can get a team excited and can get people focused and all headed in one direction. And I think that's all I have to say about that. Excuse me, I'm just going to have a sip of water here. Oh, been talking this whole time without doing that, so that feels good. Okay. <clears throat> Creating these unintended symbol designs, and if you see them, would you ever change your design choices to go going forward? Yeah, I think... 
you often can get locked into a design and you go blind to it. You stop seeing it. And I, that's one of the reasons why I do enjoy working in a studio environment is because, you know, <laughs> having someone look over, <laughs> having someone look over your shoulder. And our, our art director, Matt Goldman, was the best at this of just being able to, you know, come over, look at what you're, what you're drawing. It's like, mm, that, that's balls. You drew balls. And to just look at it and know, damn it, he's right. Okay. Uh, and being able to course correct because honestly if like if one person notices um other people are going to notice and I, I think too you know that, that it's that that's that's the dance because there's there are elements that i think you know that that's kind of what design is you want people to read these things like there's um the term uh coding or uh codific codification coding where, where it's like you're trying to code oh yeah anything longer than it is Anything taller than it is wide is is a phallus, in according to uh, according to some of my schooling. Um, but the yeah the um, you know you you're trying to play up on symbols and known motifs and things like that. Like you you want to be able to pull that out of um, out of the audience intentionally. Um, And so it's it's that it's a balance of like just making sure that you can own it, I guess. Well, hey, look at that. It's, it, inking always sneaks up on me. I, this is the one thing that actually has been the saving grace of my process on Tellurian while I'm doing it is that the inking process always feels like it's going to take forever, but it's such a meditative kind of zen, like tranquil, mindless process that I just find... So it's always done before I before I really realize it. So I am here. I've done all this talk about environments. I think I'm not going to do anything for that yet. Um, but now let's bring our. Oh yeah, actually I didn't. I this was this was I pulled this up before um, um, before I started recording for YouTube. So for anyone watching it later, someone was asking about my brushes and I, these in red are the only actual brushes that I use. They are, if, I mean, I do use some of the other ones, but like this is like 95% of the time. And I'm just gonna write that down, 95. So this this one down here, the pressure one is, um, it's soft and when I press it gets bigger and more opaque. Um, and then the big opaque one, um, just because uh, this OBS thing doesn't actually record my brush set, it's just size, but it, and and it just it gets bigger and smaller, but it remains opaque. And then uh, then the big old softy is just um, that's all it is, just a big soft airbrush. Um, and th those are pretty much what I use almost exclusively. And uh, this shape is semi arbitrary. I just it's it. I just find it a little bit more interesting than the circle, but that's just purely personal preference. Uh, um, effectively, I'm using <coughs> the same three brushes that I've been using since I started on Photoshop 2 um, back in the sepia tone days. Um, so let me pull up my paper doll again. Where were you? Where were you? I'm uh, not labeling things as diligently as I normally would. I'm just going to get rid of all these layers down below. It's not really... Uh, no, I'm going to keep them so I can post layers if people want to see them. Fine. Self. All right. sure I've got everything in order flip through I've got line paper doll colors up here I will get rid of the brush sheet okay I am actually going to label this lines can people actually see 
my layers. No, they can't. Okay, well, ooh, ooh, can I do that? Let me just double check. Do, 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 window capture. Can I add Photoshop? No. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Oh man, learning new stuff all the time. Get a load of that. There's my layers. Sorry to everyone who's been screaming at the stream because they knew how to do that this whole time. But this is the first one, so that's what you get. <laughs> Alrighty. Do you like? I'm 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 like I said, I'm indulging in the negative space in just the, the black if that's what you're referring to, just the, the totally black um, figure there, the black bodysuit, um, just because it's a it's a prohibition I've given myself on Tellurian um, that I'm I'm not giving myself I'm not letting myself fill with all black just to let the line take front and center. So this being just sort of a a twitch experiment sketch just to go through the process a bit. Um, I'm allowing myself some, some leeway. Rebelling against myself. So now I'm just taking the opaque, opaque brush and I'm just doing a quick, quick and dirty color. Are you saying that's oh I'm glad I'm glad you think so. Yeah, it's I'm I'm trying to um I don't know if you were here for it, but I was um just to explain that like the negative space between her hair and her body, I was trying to be somewhat intentional about that, in that I wanted it to be a contrasting shape, so we have this line wait the her main line of action really is here and then this arm is kind of this is this this line is kind of meant to echo that and then I have the the contrasting arm like this this direction here and I wanted something that that wasn't involved in that that kind of um, didn't didn't follow those lines so I'm glad you think it's reading well it's working all right so now I'm just gonna I'm just gonna this is another one of those like just tasks. So I'm going to just plot along and see if I can answer any more questions. Do you feel allowing yourself to have a sort of outlet for things like that using solid black is healthy for artists? Um, yeah, 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 I think so. I, I, um, you know, if you're, especially, I don't know, I think if you're committed to something, you're trying to remain consistent. Um, I mean, even just like the, the dieting concept of giving yourself a cheat day. Um, I, uh, I think, I think that, um, I think it's good. I think too, it's, it's cool. You know, it's, it's another way of healthily not letting yourself get hemmed in too much. Um, like I, I've been over the years, I've been starting to draw actually more consistently. Like I've, I've actually become I used to kind of try different things all the time, like every new image was done differently, but I've I've really now honed it down to a pretty consistent process. So most images I make follow this routine that you're watching, where it's like gesture, then construction, then ink, then color, and then if once I lay in this color, I'll show you kind of my, my basic color process again. Um, but no, I, th I think you know. Every now and then, I I'll do. I'll, I'll whip out some textured brushes, and I'll I'll just m m you know even just whip up some abstract messes and stuff like that. Like I think it just helps just to try stuff out and keep things a bit fresh if you can. Um, if you don't try new outlets, new things, there's always the worry of stagnating. I think those outlets are good. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, 
classic old sci-fi version, just solid gold guns. This is uh, yeah. This is good practice too. Um, talking about this, I I have um, kind of humbled to have been invited to um, do a little podcast interview thing next week, which I will talk more about. I'll, I'll try to make sure people know about it when it's when it's on its way. Um, but that'll be talking a little bit more in depth about Tellurian, or at least the process or, or whatnot. Um, doo -doo -doo, a question. Thanks. Um, it's good to be on Twitch. I, I don't know. This is actually kind of working. This is my inaugural run. Um, seen some videos where you encourage studying. What kind of study routines do you have or can suggest? Good question. Um, yes, I advocate studying a great deal. Uh, what I suggest is because I really don't think there's any 100% surefire answer for that, is um, that it does require... How would I put it? I'm still trying to figure out how to articulate the, my how I want to put it now, but I think that if if art if art is storytelling, and I I believe it is, um, then really each each one of us we're different. We're we're not the same artists. We're, we're we all have different priorities. We all have different stories we want to tell, and and that's good. We all we all should. I'm excited to hear everybody else's too. Um, I think that um, you should study what it is, what would, what is required to tell the stories that you are passionate about. So, you know, for those for those artists who are deeply passionate about, I don't know, cars, who really love cars deeply and madly, like. It, you know what you're studying it's time to go know cars inside and out and draw them like mad um, and so for myself it's it's primarily storytelling through figure and performance and, and all that so I do a ton of figure drawings um, and and I think that that you know that that's kind of my thing I know artists who are huge into environment and environmental storytelling um, and so a lot, most of their studies are, um, um, you know, like architectural renderings or, or like plein air studies or, or whatnot. And, uh, and so, yeah, I think, I think it's really just let, I'd say, let the story dictate it first. So what stories do you want to tell? And then think, what do I need to know inside and out in order to tell stories about that well? So that, let me know if that answered your question um because because really then it's just it's just trying to know something well enough that you can be confident about it and, and confident confident about recreating it yeah so i think that that would be my answer to that um let me know if you need some clarification there um i remember an artist talking about silhouette design have like a cartoon cloud you have a pure side the flat side and the chaotic side and this is often what draws people into a design have you heard of this idea thinking before um that's an interesting one i haven't heard it put like that before um i think the the chen yi chang talk that i mentioned earlier um and actually again maybe we should we should post that link in the chat uh, no okay i'm gonna try to i'm tr gonna try to be diligent and i'll try to put it in the in the link of the description of this YouTube video. I'll put the link to the Chen Yi Chang talk. Um, which means I should probably make sure I go, I save this chat or go back and copy it. Or did I save that? Okay, that's gonna be back a while. Um, he talked a great deal about um, rhythm. And um, there you go, I got it. I'm gonna bookmark it there, okay. So he talks a great deal about rhythm and goes into into huge depth about it. And he talks about that principle a lot. Um, and I think it's it's very similar. Like it it it. Um, oh, oh, losing the chat here. There we go. Oh, 
Oh, I keep scrolling myself down. Oh, thanks for posting that again. Okay. Um, so, doing that, here's 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 the here's the Cole's notes version of it. In case you don't want to go go watch it, but it, I I highly recommend you watch the entirety of it because it's very very good. But the idea of straight against curve, um, because nature being beautifully beautifully put together um, muscles never sit side by side like this um, our our bodies and and na bodies in nature are, are incredibly elegant so they fit together very well they actually you know will, will slide into each other very well but what that ends up doing is is creating um, uh, the possibility for there to be straights against curves so you know the classic kids drawing of a, of a muscly arm is is like this whereas like you know you look at let's say the incredibly elegant bruce tim uh arm and it's and it's you know a straight with this beautiful rhythm of what and he, he put it in waltz form which i really loved where it's like this this you know the kids version is like but 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 whereas the the almost like the waltz like waltz like rhythm of like one two three one two three and it sets up this i don't know just this really beautiful uh beautiful and, and believable uh aesthetic language i it watched the video because he puts it better than i do and his, his i think he, he explains it very well I, I i honestly go back and watch that talk several times every few years um i think i'm going to switch into the lighting section now and i might talk through this a little bit um Depends on the work that you're doing at a specific time with Tellurian. What has been the most important studies that you've done for it? That's a good question. What themes and, to and topics have given you inspiration for it? Well, to, to be honest, and this is, this is actually probably something I'll end up talking about in this upcoming podcast, but um, I'm very hesitant to talk in detail about... I just want to be careful about how I talk about Tellurian. Um, I, I, I really don't mind talking about it from a technical perspective, um, but I kind of feel like from a content perspective, because of what I'm trying to do uh, as far as just telling a story through visuals, I kind of feel like that makes it delicate um, in, the, in the sense that if I were to start talking too much about themes and what my intentions for it are and even the context of what an image is or what a building is or what a character is doing that that it kind of takes away from like because it's because it's silent it has it's it, because it's purely visual it has to live on visuals alone and if i start talking about it in too much like it start talking about the content too much i feel like i would be like a bull in the china shop and just smash to bits the and, and almost like never give the visuals a chance to prove that they can stand up on their own or not I, it's, it's all a big experiment we'll see how it works in the end but um, but yeah so I think as, as far as the as, as far as the studies that I've done for it um, I've done a lot of um, I've been keeping up with my figure drawing because I'm, I'm doing a lot of that um, but also it's it's been a great chance to draw stuff that I don't get to draw at work because it just doesn't work like throughout you'll notice like long coats and capes that you know would give video game animators n nightmares um, but I don't need to worry about that um, or um, I've just been really enjoying um, uh, indulging in plant life I've just been enjoying drawing plants um, so actually I've, I've in the winter time here in Edmonton it gets pretty brutally cold for much of the year and so we try to find indoor stuff to do and so we've been taking our kids to um this uh um indoor garden that has like this indoor tropical jungle place it's a great place to go when you need a a, a dose of of warmth and uh we would take our little we would all take our sketchbooks and we'll draw some of the plants and so it's like drawing tropical plants and stuff like that it's a great um a great great little exercise to do together but it's also awesome reference for 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 Tellurian 
yeah so i think that th those two would be the main things i think the, the rest of it is is tr is um it's i'm trying to maintain a fairly let's see how do i it's probably not too much to say i'm it's pretty obvious i'm trying to maintain a fairly simple geometric language so for the for the world and the and the things that you see in the world so so that actually doesn't require much and i think one of the benefits is because i know the story intimately um, i'm not trying to figure it out from another writer's head and i'm not trying to piece it together with a team it's my story so i can i don't i i know the in, i know my own intent so i can design for that intent um so i can be a lot more intuitive and direct than i would be with say anything in video games um so yeah i don't know i hope that i hope that kind of answers that um i'm gonna i'm gonna pause on questions for just a sec because I'm, I'm i'm starting off i i already kind of got into it here um but I'll, i'm just going to talk through this layer shading process again just because i get a lot of questions on it and i want to have a few cases where i'm very clear about it so what i've done is i've taken um, and I'm, I'm gonna just just because now I know I figured out we have actually got the layers in the chat window um, or in the in the in the window in view I am going to label them so this is the diffuse and let me know are, are you guys able to actually read the the layer labels um, is that is that clear enough because my, my view of it's just a tiny little thumbnail, so I'm not I'm not going to see. Um, let's see, and I will just color code these. So I'm going to say um, gray. Let's leave that. Okay, I'll, for for this for this I'll I'll blow this up. Um, so I think it's 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 good to see. I'm going to just hide the sketches here. I'll just toss everything in a sketch layer here. Um, and we've got, and I'm just going to paper doll. And that layer does nothing. So, okay. Cleaned up a bit. Um, let's make sure that works. Okay. So let's take a closer look. So light layer, I'm going to color yellow so it's easier to remember. And the shadow layer, I'm going to layer uh, what's darker, purple. OK. So <clears throat> the diffuse is the flat color. That's what the color um, would be just in pure white light. Um, shadow layer, uh, all I did was duplicate the diffuse layer. And then I um, lowered the uh, the brightness, and I adjusted the colors to add some some blue and some green to it. I just decided that that's going to be my that's those are that, that's my shadow. And then did the same thing with the light layer. So I, I took the the diffuse layer, lightened it, added a little bit of red. I think it might add just a little bit more. Oh, that was the diffuse. Don't do that. So this, this technique that I'm going through right now is born out of um, a, lo a lifetime or <laughs> a career of having to change images on a regular basis and make adjustments. It's attempting to be as non-destructive as, as can be and quick. So it's all born out of trying to make images quickly um, in a way that they can be edited quickly. So let's see, this is a pretty dynamic pose. It would be a shame if the lighting wasn't dynamic as well. Um, and actually what I'm gonna do too is just for the sake of making sure that the contrast actually reads, I'm gonna set the background to 50% gray. Um, let's see, so that's the diffuse. There's my, there's my colors. And so that gives me the confidence to darken those shadows up a little bit more. And I'm gonna just Give them some more color. I, I'm not a fan of desaturated shadows. Um, all right, and then my light layer. 
It's looking nice and bright. Okay, cool. So now I'm going to mask out my light layer. So the light layer is on top of the shadow layer, and you can do either either or. It doesn't really actually matter. Like the dark layer, the shadow layer can be on top as long as one is masked out onto the other. So actually, I'm now. It's kind of like lighting a scene. You're going to go through. Just imagine, and let me be really articulate about it. Um, I'm going to put a light light source coming from down here. Um, a general light source, so it's not going to be point. And this is just like an exercise in scene lighting. And what I'll do sometimes, if it's if it's a particu particularly complex image, is I will actually just make a little um, uh, a little grid for myself, or a little um, flow. I'm just going to let me just distort this. Um, Why can't I? Oh, there we go. Okay. So we'll say that's the direction that the light's going. And I'll just kind of, maybe I'll just put that in the background so I keep remembering it. I'll just call that light, the, uh, light source. Then I can just go in and start painting the light on. So we've got this strong upward lighting. It's going to get all dramatic. So I'm going to just basically start trying to, um, as intuitively, but also as legibly as possible, start trying to paint in where the light may fall. This is definitely one of those areas where I take a lot of license. Um, there is what's right and then there's what looks good and I will take what looks good almost every time or at least like what 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 makes the image clear because if you if you just like this I mean a technique like this I have tried this if you just go straight from photo reference like straight up trace lighting information off of a photo um, it, it, it's just bad. It just looks bad. Or at least it's very hard to get it looking. What you end up with is just this kind of like strange, you get, you end up with these strange artifacts that are believable, but not beneficial. So I guess it's just finding that balance that you're comfortable with. So yeah, just gonna, just trying to, pretty, but and this can, the nice thing is too, um, that that I have found personally doing it this way, and I, at this point, who knows, a lot of people might do it this way, and this is no big deal, but I, I just personally like that, you know, I can make a mistake, or I can even go in and just say like very broad strokes, like this gun is gonna be, blah, 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 blah. there you go, okay, that's that's what it is. Um, but it's non-destructive enough that I can go in and get more specific and I can refine things. So um, one approach that I'll often take is just figuring out how I want, like for example, let's try it on the hair, is just figuring out broad strokes, how do I want the light to fall on the hair? Um, let's see, does that actually zoom out on the screen? Yeah, okay. So how do I actually want the light to fall on there? That's right, Cameron. If it it's like the cool rule. If it looks cool, it can supersede all rules. So I can kind of see. Okay, is that is that working a little back there? And then 
come in and then I just kind of then I already have the broad shapes <laughs> Joe Mad really is the king of cool <laughs> Yeah, I uh, I loved I loved uh, the Dark Siders games. Special place, special place in my heart. Just for the Joe madness of it, it was like being able to literally jump inside an old ballpoint pen notebook from when I was fourteen. of honor the line work in this hair I'm I'm still hair is I it's, uh, it's another one I'm, I'm really glad there are artists out there who are passionate about hair I appreciate it for the graphic design element that it so often proves to be but I really don't I just have to, I think I have to just acknowledge that I don't care about it as much as I know a lot of other artists do, um, beyond what it offers in a graphic and storytelling perspective. So I know I can still always, that's one of those areas where I should probably be doing more research and studies. Oh man, I, for Darksiders 3, that is good news but also yeah like Joe Mad is the heart and soul I mean I'm amazed at how well Joe Mad has been able to translate his work into every game project he's been involved on even the the cancelled ones like it just it's such a it's like the perfect style to translate into into 3D somehow Hopefully that with two Darksiders games and the um, that kind of more turn-based one out, like you've got enough of a you've got enough of a starting point. It'd be hard to get wrong. Famous last words, of course, but okay, I'm gonna block out now the shadow from the legs on the hair. Let's see if I can indicate form. Now her shadow on the hair. Yeah. Well, uh, there's it feels like that's you know the Joe the Joe Mad thing, I this is something I've ranted and railed about with my brother-in-law I think is um, uh, Battle Chasers taught me a really important lesson about story and the power of story it's a similar lesson that uh, Half-Life 3 has taught gamers um, or at least had the opportunity to teach gamers is just the awe-inspiring power that story has on people and that a story unfinished um, <laughs> just a story unfinished <laughs> will not will not go away um, but just just to see the just to see the hold that stories can have on people that like it can be decades spanning that there can be a story stuck that gets that gets its hooks in you and you have to see it through you, you just there's there will always be a part of me that um kind of doesn't matter if battle chasers story is finished or completed or or seen through in in the end in in, in a game format it's like it's kind of just the okay uh, I shouldn't go off on a battle chasers right um, 
what I'm doing here is I want to add some really quick and dirty highlights to some of this gold motif stuff. So I just duplicated the lines and I just, uh, I don't know if that's really working. Nah. Mm. No, forget I tried to do that. Ignore that. Um, so now I can, I'm, I'm looking at this. What I did here too is I added almost like the idea of the, the light is kind of um, more intense down below. I added a gradient here to kind of soften the shadows. But I kind of feel like those shadows are still a little a little too hard. So this is this is the joy of of this approach too, is that now I can look at this and I don't have to go in spot by spot. Um, I can adjust each. I spend a lot of time balancing this stuff out. So I can I can kind of lighten this up. Um, I think what I really am trying to do is soften that face. I'm really I'm not convinced by the shadows on the face. I think that's <clears throat> What I'm gonna. This is another one of those cases where I think rather than going for fully, fully accurate, I'm gonna just kind of. Feels a bit better. So I'm kind of a little bit ignoring my my direction a bit, but it, that does still legitimate there are still some legitimate planes of the face that could be exposed to light there. So I don't think it's breaking it too badly. Um, yeah, we love stories. We love to go on vacation, not to take a break, but to come back and tell the story. It's true. That's, that's why we, that's why we do it. So now what I can do is, um, I have my light layer. I'm just going to add, like, I'm going to turn it into a highlight layer too. And the only way I'm, all I'm going to do to do that, again, you guessed it, is just to lighten it up even more. Um, so another advantage of working this way I have found is that my colors all remain consistent in relation to each other. So if I lighten everything according to the same parameters, um, it preserves um, uh, consistency between them, and that after all really is uh, color is color is all relative anyway and so as long as the color remains consistent with itself um, I think you're in good standing so um, now two so this is I'll just call this the highlight layer gradient I'm just gonna name these so that they're a little bit more clear um, I'm going to now become more cliche and I'm going to add a blue backlight. Uh, let's see, I'll make this blue. Call this the backlight. So all I did was duplicate the shadow layer, lighten it up, add some blue, call it a black light. I'm going to mask it all out and paint it back in. Um, yeah, it really does let you play with the diffuse colors. Um, the orange color parts, you see it? Meh, yeah, the orange smiley face. Oh, see, there you go. And these are all normal layers at this point. Yeah, there's no, no blend modes. This is just like straight up, straight up color. Each one could be, could be isolated here. Let me pull up one for you. Um, so here, this is, these are the, these are the lights. And it's just all opaque color. And that's just sitting on top of a shadow layer behind the lines. And there you go. Um, so yeah, now I'm going to just. And actually, you want to OK, here's another advantage. It's, it's, it sounds like I'm trying to sell it to you guys. I'm not really. This is just how I, how I like. I'm just explaining why it works. I can now select the different color areas um, if I want. So I'm just selecting all the gold. And so I'm just going to put this blue rim light on the gold to start with, um, just to keep it kind of constrained. I just don't want to get into the hair. Um, let's 
So yeah, just painting this reverse highlight here. Uh, just to give, I mean, anytime you're painting metal, if you don't add those dielectric secondary or tertiary colors, it just never quite works. <laughs> was that Billy Mays selling the sham wow? Did he ever do that? Or was that always that spiky haired guy? I feel like adding it to the hair is a little bit Pandora's box. Um, it could get carried away here. I'm going to try to keep it semi subtle, but this hair takes up a lot of room. But it just kind of feels like it's, the image isn't going to work if I don't pull this light in here, too. Let me get some on the on the orbs. Unless these are just giant needles and she's a blood donor and, or a blood she's collecting donations. Now let's not go there. Um, and then on top of everything, even on top of the lines, I'm just going to throw in that highlight. So, um, still not totally convinced, and I think it's just the contrast of that light is still, I mean, I know I want it contrasty, but not that contrasty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to gradiate it out. So right now I have, here are my, here's my light layer, but it's a little, there's too much contrast around the face it's feeling. So I'm going to mask it again, black and white gradient, and I'm just going to soften it down. All right, well, yeah, thanks for joining us. Thanks for being a part of the inaugural run. I'm just trying to see if I can find an angle to gradiate out this light and shadow a little bit. So it kind of, yeah, that's the, that's the difference there. Yeah, I'm going to try. We'll see. So, uh, no, I'm not going to try painting it out. I still want to keep that kind of sharp overall visual language consistent. You know what I'm going to do instead? Instead of gradiating out, what I'm not liking about gradiating it out is that the colors are kind of dying, like they're becoming just muddy. Um, so instead, because I still have this layer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to create not that a darker um, a darker layer that preserves the colors better so I'm gonna um, adjust the curves a bit so there we go so it's still it preserves the color but it's not it doesn't have quite that same contrast and then I will gradiate it out from the bottom gradate gradiate uh, there we go. Okay, so I'm feeling a bit better about that. Oh, man. Here, I'm totally forgetting. Thanks for reminding me, Paper Doll, that um, I'm supposed to be 
looking at Giga's little laser barbarian, her laser pirate, and she has no la action. Like, there's no lasers being fired. That would totally change the light source. I'm going to make pure hot white lasers blasting out. Using my soft brush to paint that out a little bit. Okay, so I've got yeah, 80s ladies are sound effects. Eventually, I'll I might end up going so far as to learn After Effects and just start going nuts. Yeah, speaking of going nuts, glitching out here. Okay, well, you know what? It is beginning to get, get late here. I am going to... <laughs> no, I'll just leave it like that for now. Um, I am going to wrap it up here. And call this inaugural run of Twitch complete. Thank you very much to everyone for joining me. Um, I am going to, um, just as a heads up, I'm going to attempt to make, um, I know this is Friday, but I'm going to attempt to make, okay, well, no, this was Thursday night. So I'm going to attempt to make Thursday nights um, a Twitch evening, um, just to try to keep some consistency going. Uh, so. Uh, I will try to give a, a heads up and, um, instead of just saying I'm doing it right now, I'm going to try to give a, uh, a lead up, but um, look, look for it potentially on, yeah, so Thursday nights, um, probably around 8.30 Mountain Standard Time, and um, yeah, thank you guys very much for, for, for joining me in this and uh, for asking questions and and keeping me company while I while I work through this, um, I will save this out on my YouTube channel. And um, yeah, have a good night, everybody. Bye.